Oh, really? You have your own YouTube channel? You must be an influencer. Yeah, surely. With my 600 subscribers and barely watched videos and my awful free speech, I do make huge impact in this world. I hated tubes as I was a kid. They are made of glass and they can be broken easily. They need in most of the cases high voltage, that means uh, for me, who likes to take things apart for myself, I have to be more careful not to get uh, the electric shock uh, damage. They have heat issues and in most of the cases uh, they need transformers and that means uh, the devices that you build with tubes are pretty heavy and uh, they are not this compact that you can build with solid state. And in fact, I made a whole episode on the tubes that is called Line 6 Why So Negative, Part 1. Well, but as an electric guitar player, I can't get rid of the tubes uh, completely. At some point, the tubes are responsible for electric guitar sound that we know today. Well, I wanted to have some minimalistic compact equipment uh, that is reliable. And uh, I was into digital technology all along uh, that uh, could make uh, the tubes compact, but ever since AMT brought this, the tube preamps of the market, I can leave the tubes because with this couple of devices I can get a really huge sound and uh, some of the digital equipment is uh, more uh, heavy than this analog tube equipment. But at some point I wanted to uh, get rid of the all huge parts in uh, all the guitar equipment. And another huge part is a guitar cabinet. In the first couple of episodes of Line 6 Why So Negative, I used a couple of keywords uh, that I used to describe the problem and solution of uh, guitar sound. And these keywords uh, were signal processing. Well, Usually the signal uh, is processed by a tube guitar amplifier that consists of three basic components preamp, power amp and a guitar cabinet. And the main two components are preamplifier and guitar cabinet. That's where the most of the processing is being made. The power amp uh, is primarily there to make a, a guitar sound loud. But it can bring a couple of harmonics, especially if it's a uh, tube uh, pre, uh, power ramp. But uh, as you can see, for example, the AMT made a bunch of different uh, preamplifiers with the same tube, and I guess uh, you can uh, use a simplest uh, analog circuit uh, to recreate uh, those uh, power ramp harmonics. As for guitar cabinet, well, this is huge part as well that I don't really like to carry around. And I would like to get rid of it completely. And uh, today we have impulse responses that can make this uh, actually happen. But I think a couple of things can be approved there as well. Being on YouTube and making gear reviews is a lot of fun. That's why so many people do this. But sometimes it's pointless. For example, you mentioned uh, that the Samsung CS are super awesome and super cheap microphones, and the next day they're gone. Nobody does those anymore. And that's what happens to a lot of gear. And sometimes, if you are lucky enough, you can work with different companies and design your own gear. But uh, maybe you have to be more lucky than I am uh, as a YouTuber like Glenn Fricker and his cock blocker, uh, the noise gate. Well, but uh, one of the reasons why I started gear reviews, I wanted to help manufacturers and to show some of the flaws and maybe uh, some better technical solutions. 
with their gear. And uh, I wanted to do this with uh, all this series about uh, guitar cabinet emulation. And so let's take a closer look at the guitar cabinet and how does it work. As I mentioned in the second part of line 6 why so negative episode, the guitar cabinet is one of the most uh, important parts of uh, the whole guitar signal processing. And basically this is sophisticated frequency filter. If you take a look at uh, some of uh, the guitar speakers, they are anything but uh, linear, meaning they don't represent all the frequencies equally. Usually they have a frequency range from uh, uh, 200 Hz up to uh, 5000 Hz and with a lot of mid-range boost and a couple of its own harmonics. But this doesn't mean that you can grab any EQ and boost some mid-range and you get uh, this uh, guitar cabinet sound. But we can try it as well. But still you need some of the natural compression and a couple of uh, some other things that are being made with the sound during all this uh, electrical to mechanical and mechanical to electrical transportation. And there were first attempts uh, back in the 80s, I guess, uh, to recreate the uh, electric uh, guitar sound or the cabinet sound with the analog circuit. And today I want to take a look at a couple of those devices because uh, those are still on the market. First of all, I'll take the Red Box Mark III made by Hughes and Kettner. Uh, today there is still uh, uh, Red Box Mark V on the market that I guess is basically the same. What does it do? Well, it has uh, two emulations, either 4x12 box or combo. Well, first of all, what can I say? I would design it differently. For example, I have to unscrew all this bottom part to replace the battery and for me this is too much trouble. Second thing, if you want to power it, you have to have uh, the AC adapter and I would uh, design something for 9 volt DC if I would engineer this kind of box because this is uh, something that is on the market. Well, but there are a couple of good things. For example, you can power it with a Femton power and uh, connect it directly to your sound card or PA. And it has a line input, a speaker in uh, and a speaker through for the load box or uh, the speaker as a load. And it has a balanced output. Why wouldn't I buy this? Well, this is about 100 euro, I guess, uh, on the market. And for this price you can uh, buy something like AMT R1. It's uh, red as well. But basically, this one emulates uh, the preamp uh, of the Mesa rectifier and it does a pretty good job. And it has actually the secondary function with the cabinet's uh, emulation output. And if you switch it off, uh, the signal goes in the bypass mode. Uh, for the usual output. And as for the cabinet emulation, uh, this doesn't get switched off, so you can basically use it as the cabinet emulation in the, the switched off mode. I want to uh, grab the Sneaker size DI box as well. There are a lot of those uh, on the market, but they look uh, all the same and I guess they're made uh, on the same Chinese factory. Basically, I saw a couple by, uh, made by X-Wife, a couple made by Moore or however this is uh, pronounced. I saw uh, Fendi DI boxes as well. The one that I bought is made by Tom Shine Engineering and it was uh, shipped me directly from China for about uh, 30 euro, including shipping costs. Basically, this is a uh, DI box, and uh, that's why I use it. But it has a built in uh, switch for cabinet simulation. 
and uh, this is about four times as cheaper as the red box so we test those as well for the next test I'll use my most controversial in terms of sound engineering instrumental piece uh, Insomnia well, basically I recorded it with the AMT SS11 A preamp and a couple of impulse responses. And the tricky part was uh, finding a sweet spot uh, in terms of configuration of AMT SS11 A and uh, right uh, impulse responses. And I guess I would have get better results if I had back then the new AMT brick preamps. And that's what I use uh, uh, as a reamping tool. I'll use the AMT uh, Vox uh, emulation for the clean part and the AMT rectify emulation for the solo part. And I use all of these uh, devices uh, to emulate the guitar cabinet. So let's take a listen. What can I say? Back in the 80s digital technology wasn't uh, this advanced. But you had to start somewhere. I saw a couple of uh, videos about Redbox where some uh, endorser of Hughes and Kettner uh, says a lot of uh, good things uh, that this box is uh, the biggest thing that he actually played. but. That's where I think that this is sponsored content. And besides, some of guitar players who said that this is a huge thing actually use this as uh, the additional tool uh, with the, the mic uh, cabinet. So I don't see the point of uh, using this in the first place. I can use something like this if uh, my a digital cabinet emulation gets busted and I don't have any choice and I can sort of live with it. But uh, this wouldn't be my first choice. So nowadays we have uh, digital technology but this is an uh, issue for my next episode. Stay safe, have a nice day and keep on rocking.